The Spirit of God is with you, and also with you. Welcome to this virtual gathering of Washington Avenue Christian Church. My name is Nathan Russell, and I serve this congregation as its senior pastor. And it is a good and joyful thing to be with you as we worship God from our doorsteps to the ends of the earth in an online virtual format. Please visit the description below this video to download today's worship guide. You can print the guide or view it on a separate device. Our organist and pianist is Evan Collins, and today with the Washington Avenue Christian Church Orchestra, they will lead us in the hymns and the lyrics will appear on your screen. Today's worship leader is Don Hange Jr. and the elder at the table is Polly Simmons. When we come to our time of prayer, I will mention only the first names of those who are on our prayer list. If you would like to add to our prayer list, there is a link below so that you can submit one online. During the prayers of the people, I'll conclude each petition with God of unconditional welcome and ask that you respond saying, help us accept each other. During our offering, you'll have the opportunity to give online using our web portal. A link for this is also below in the video description. Our special offering for the month of June is for the operating expenses of Camp Christian. To give toward this effort, we ask that you drop off or mail in your contribution to the church using the special envelope and also mark the designation in the memo line. Throughout the offering meditation, I encourage you to talk with your viewing partners about God's gifts and myriad blessings. Following the hymn of communion, we will break bread with each other. If you don't have a piece of bread or a cup of juice, you have the time to get it so you can participate in this sacred meal with the whole people of God. There are several efforts through social media to participate in our church's life. First, because we cannot determine who is worshiping with us, please leave a comment on this video and let us know who you are, how you found us, and your viewing location. Second, if you are viewing through the premiere, you can chat with us throughout the service. Third, please give this worship service a thumbs up and share the link to it on your own social media accounts. Fourth, like, share, retweet, and comment on our church's social media pages. Fifth, invite someone to participate in online virtual worship with you, even if they do not live in Northeast Ohio. And finally, we're always glad to see pictures of your sacred spaces. So take pictures and post them using the hashtag virtual worship. You can also tag the church by using our handle at WACC. E-L-Y-R-I-A. Looking ahead in the life of our church, tomorrow at 7 p.m., Debbie Walker will lead a virtual gathering of Children's Corner Lessons from the Heart. On Tuesday at 7.45 a.m., Lisa Ward will gather people via Zoom for a devotional using the Upper Room. On Tuesday at 5 p.m., our Outreach Committee will meet via Zoom. On Wednesday at 7 p.m., we will continue with our service of evening prayer and vespers. On Thursday at 10 a.m., we will have an all-church social hour via Zoom, and this one is extra special because we will be saying farewell to Dennis and Diane Schmidt. On Friday, our church offices will be closed for the holiday. Beloved of God, Today is the fourth Sunday after Pentecost. Jesus is still at it, teaching his heart out and preparing his disciples to be sent out as sheep in the midst of wolves. Will they find welcome? Will they be offered a cup of cold water? Those questions loom large, but we can begin by welcoming the Spirit of God into our hearts and homes as our worship of God is about to begin. So, dear friends, I say to you, wherever you may be, lift up your hearts. We lift them to the Lord.
God, we welcome your Holy Spirit as we worship you from many locations and at various times. Though a global pandemic has changed how we embody boundless welcome and radical hospitality, we ask that you create space within us to welcome those whom you send as your witnesses. As we welcome them, we welcome your Son, and as we welcome your Son, we welcome you. Giving a cup of cold, refreshing water can be a first step. This is the prayer, the hope, and the calling of any who would be disciples of Christ. Amen. by the coronavirus COVID-19 pandemic. We also want to remember that our nation is in turmoil, continuing turmoil, another pandemic of systemic racism. And we yearn for a day when all God's children will be welcome and wanted. We also hold these persons in our heart as we speak their names to the very heart of God. Audrey, Ben, Beth, Betty, Bill, Bob, Chris, Debbie, Dennis and Diane, Diana, Ellen, Glenna, Janet, Jim, Joan, John and Ava, Joyce, Kay and Ken, Lee, Mark, Marlene, Mary, Nick, Noel, Rebecca, Sherry, Stephanie, Suzanne, and Tim. We also hold these families in our hearts as we extend our deepest sympathies. The family of Pam, the family of Loretta, and the family of Shirley. Let us join our hearts together as we go now to God in prayer. O oh God, our world continues to wrestle with oh so much. The pandemic of COVID-19 and the pandemic of 
systems and structures of racism. Be with us as we seek to be agents of your justice and shalom in this rapidly tumultuous and shifting landscape. God of unconditional welcome, help us accept each other. We hear, O oh God, your call to welcome, to welcome those whom you send, and to also extend a cup of cold water. God of unconditional welcome, help us accept each other. We confess that we have so often read sacred text in ways that are colorblind and in ways that privilege us. We see ourselves as sheep, but never as the wolf. We confess our complicity and our complacency in that we have not welcomed those whom you have sent. God of unconditional welcome, help us accept each other. Here in this world, O oh God, beautiful and terrible things are happening. Help us to not be afraid or be fearful of the prophetic challenge. God of unconditional welcome, help us accept each other. Many, O oh God, are grieving right now. Loss looms large for us and we cannot gather in solidarity in ways that have mattered to us. Teach us new ways to extend hospitality amidst distance and separation. God of unconditional welcome, help us accept each other. Sometimes, O oh God, we lack acceptance of others because we cannot accept ourselves. Give us the courage to accept acceptance, that we are welcomed and wanted by you. God of unconditional welcome, help us accept each other. Finally, O oh God, we pray for the request stirring within us, including those we have already named, and those we wish to lift to your heart from wherever we may be. God of unconditional welcome, help us accept each other. God of unconditional welcome, you have accepted us. You have called us by our names, and you have met us with your transforming gift of amazing grace that reorients our lives to be first and foremost about your reign of justice and joy. By the power of your Holy Spirit, keep us praying without ceasing as we say together, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our debts, as we forgive our debtors. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever. Amen. As we come to this time of offering, so much has already been done. Your gifts have arrived online and in person by being dropped off in the vestibule or mailed in, and we have brought them here into this sanctuary and placed here. 
where we give thanks to God for these gifts of stewardship and discipleship. And now our online web portal is open for your gifts and tithes and offerings as well. Hear this invitation, beloved. Jesus said, Truly I tell you, those who offer a cup of cold water in the name of a disciple will not lose their reward. So, beloved, let us offer to God the gifts of our lives and labor. May we pray together. Faithful God, we give you thanks that you have entrusted us with a gift of hospitality and generosity, and that you have set us free to be generous givers of the gifts that you have so freely given to us. May our offerings this day draw us closer to you as we share them with others for the sake of your reign of justice and joy. Amen. reading from the Gospel according to Matthew, chapter 10, verses 40 through 42. Listen for the word of God in these words of Scripture. Whoever welcomes you welcomes me, and whoever welcomes me welcomes the one who sent me. Whoever welcomes a prophet in the name of a prophet will receive a prophet's reward. And whoever welcomes a righteous person in the name of a righteous person will receive the reward of the righteous. 
And whoever gives even a cup of cold water to one of these little ones in the name of a disciple, truly, I tell you, none of these will lose their reward. For the word of God in its promise and covenant. Thanks be to God. May we pray together. Welcome, Creator Christ and Holy Spirit. Come and move among us and open our hearts so that we become who you have called us to be. For if we welcome those whom you are sending and thus welcome you, then nothing else matters. And if we do not welcome those whom you are sending and thus do not welcome you, Oh, then nothing else matters. Liberate us to be people of generous welcome and radical hospitality. We ask this in the name of your beloved. Amen. For the third week now, we've been eavesdropping on Jesus. We've seen him on beachfront property holding up his sign with big, bold, all caps letters, Help Wanted Disciples of Christ. Some, some might say that we have exhibited stalker behavior following Jesus close enough but keeping a safe social distance lest he call us by our names. When Jesus called the twelve and commissioned them with authority, we cupped our hands behind our ears and wondered aloud, is he saying what we think he's saying? Last week, we read the fine print of the discipleship license agreement, and though I cannot speak for you, I keep coming back to the red letter document day after day, questioning if I will click accept to agree. It's strange, really. Following Jesus seems to be a daily choice and not a did it once and done decision. The tasks of discipleship are enormous. That's without question. Just listen. Just listen to what Jesus says. As you go, Proclaim the good news. The kingdom of God has come near. I would have been fine, 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 had Jesus stopped there, but he kept right on going. Cure the sick, raise the dead, cleanse the leper, and cast out demons. You're going to do such cool stuff, you won't even believe it. With who you are as a child of God, and with the gifts you bring to the table, and with the authority that I'm about to give, there's nothing you cannot do in my name. Nothing, no thing shall be impossible for you. No one could accuse Jesus of not having a persistent and consistent vision of grandeur. It was his standard M.O. God's reign of justice and shalom will come upon the earth. Ain't no stopping it now. It's here already and it's on its way. Though I usually lean toward optimism, I hold my optimism in tension with a generous dose of reality. Raising the dead and healing those with disease and dis-ease are tall orders and far beyond my skill set, even when we take these actions as metaphors. However, if Jesus says we will do these things as we participate in the mission of God, then why not give discipleship our best faith effort and trust the results, the harvest, to God? But wait, there's more. Jesus begins telling the disciples exactly what they can expect as they go as gift and gifted into the world. See, I am sending you out like sheep into the midst of wolves, so be wise as serpents and innocent as doves. Freeze! Flashback to Matthew chapter 8. 
Jesus had just gone to the other side. It wasn't his side of the tracks. Jesus was no longer in his home of the Roman red line district of Nazareth, but in the country of the Gadarenes. Not one, but two persons possessed by demons came out from the tombs. They were fierce as anyone could get, and they terrorized people so that no one could pass that way. Jesus cast out the evil spirits into, get this, would you, a herd of swine. And the pigs rushed down the steep bank into the sea and drowned in the water. Some pigs, we might say. Also, some Jesus. But Jesus destroyed someone's property someone's livestock, likely a rich person's, with hundreds of pigs that he was fattening up for the upcoming Gadarene County Fair. In an instant, that person's pigs were long gone, and two people with whom no one dared to associate were made whole by God. The farmers of the pigs ran and told the townsfolk all that had happened. I'm sure they described it as a riot of sorts. That description seems spot on for when hundreds of swine fly off a cliff. The whole town came out to meet Jesus, and when they saw him, they said, You aren't welcome or wanted here. Please leave. Jesus hadn't even so much as said a word to them, and the people obviously had no intention of listening. No one remarked that two people once possessed were restored to health and wholeness. No one saw that Jesus' actions had bent the arc of the moral universe toward justice. No one valued the well-being of the two people. All the townsfolk could see was that Jesus had upset the apple cart of the status quo, so they banished Jesus. Jesus was the lamb sent out into the midst of wolves, a legion of demons, hundreds of pigs, and townsfolk who would not welcome or want him. Unfreeze. We must hold that story from Matthew 8 in mind because Matthew intended for his hearers and readers to experience the cold water splash of deja vu for when Jesus speaks again about welcome. Had I been with Jesus and his disciples, I would have moved from my voyeuristic position on the periphery to confront Jesus and say, hey, I, I've been listening and following you from a good and safe social distance, but, but you do know, don't you, that wolves eat sheep for breakfast, lunch, and dinner. And, and listen, Jesus, you are Mary's once little, now fully grown lamb. And if you, and by you, I mean we as sheep, go out into the midst of the wolf pack, it will not be pretty. I don't want to be negative or pessimistic here, but I do have to be honest that the mission to which you are calling us sounds deadly. Jesus would ignore my rebuttal and double down, saying, Beware of the wolves, for they will hand you over to the councils and flog you in their places of worship, and you will be dragged before governors and kings because of me. Sibling will betray sibling, parents will betray their children, and children will rise against their parents. And in-law drama, oh my gosh, like you have never seen before, you will be hated by all because of my name, but the one who endures to the end will be safe. Oh, and there's one more thing too. Don't even think that I have come to bring peace to the earth. I have not come to bring peace, but but a sword, one's foes will be members of one's own 
household. Whoever loves anything or anyone more than me is not worthy of me, and whoever does not take up the cross and follow me is not worthy of me. Those who are trying to preserve their life and reify and fortify the status quo will lose their life. But those who lose their life for the sake of Jesus Christ will find it. Click, accept, to agree, day after day after day. Jesus' language does not guarantee comfort or careless ease in the here and now, but instead promises conflict and division. Oh, come on, Jesus, can't we just all get along or focus on the positive? We might howl in protest. I cannot speak for you, but I, I feel a lump forming in my throat. Perhaps it's my own fragility welling up inside me, recognizing that I cannot follow Jesus while having one foot in his mission and the other foot in systems and structures that thwart the reign of God that is to come upon the earth. Finally, we get to the text of our gospel lesson. It's the postscript, the PS, the First Amendment to the Discipleship License Agreement. Whoever welcomes you welcomes me, and whoever welcomes me welcomes the one who sent me. Welcome a prophet in the name of a prophet, and you'll receive a prophet's reward. Same goes for welcoming those committed to justice and righteousness. And whoever gives even a cup of cold water to one of these little ones in the name of a disciple, mm, truly, I tell you, none of these will lose their reward. There's that word again. Welcome. It's not the first time we've heard the word from Jesus in this discourse on discipleship. Freeze! Flashback to earlier in this chapter, and Jesus says, If anyone will not welcome you or listen to your words, do your best, Taylor Swift, and shake off the dust from your feet as you leave that house or town. Truly, I tell you, it will be more tolerable for the land of Sodom and Gomorrah on the day of judgment than for that town. Unfreeze. I think that's what Jesus did with the Gadarenes. He was not welcomed there, nor was he wanted. He did his best to shake it off, but not without the grief that comes with rejection. Jesus takes welcome and the lack thereof quite seriously, and so must we. Many in the Western world, and especially those in the Protestant church, read scripture while aligning themselves with Jesus. We do this. I do it too. We boo and hiss as Jesus judges the elite, and we shake our heads at the disciples when they are so clueless, so oblivious, not realizing the innumerable times that we miss the mark too. We center ourselves and make our experience and our reading normative, thinking we would have gotten it right had we been there with Jesus. Sometimes we read and claim to have reached objectivity as if we are truly free from the bias and prejudice that resides deep within our human condition. In this story, we read the scripture thinking that we are the sheep. Never do we read thinking that we might be the wolves. We're the ones to be welcomed, not the ones to embody welcome. When Jesus gets kicked out from the Gadarenes, we're right with him and we shake off the dust from our feet in solidarity with him. Never do we think that we might be the Gadarenes, 
who have asked Jesus to leave. People who have said to Jesus, you're not welcome or wanted here. So what happens if we flip the script, the text, and turn it on its head 180 degrees? What if we are the people to whom God is sending out disciples? What if we are the ones to be cured, raised, cleansed, and liberated? What if we are not the sheep but the wolves? I hear you say, I am not a wolf. I get it. I am not a wolf either. I work for a church and am ordained clergy for crying out loud. I am a sheep, or at least I have a sheep's clothing. If someone were to call me a wolf, I would yowl and say, no, I am not. Wolves are bad. I am good. Therefore, I am not a wolf. We might add that wolves have fangs. They are nocturnal and spend all night howling at the full moon. Plus, wolves kill sheep. And most of us don't kill sheep. We've never even thought of it. A wolf has to kill sheep to be a real wolf. We will defend our character and our energy will go to deflecting the charge rather than reflecting on our behavior, especially our complicit and complacent behavior. We who disguise ourselves as sheep, you know, wolves in sheep's clothing, we might say, oh, we, we treat all livestock the same. We don't see colors of wool. We don't focus on difference because that's what divides us. We may not appear as wolves with fangs as we howl at the moon at night, but we do have definite wolf-like tendencies. If we flip the script, then we have to ask, what does it look like when Jesus sends a sheep into our midst, into the midst of wolves? Trudy Lamb, that is her real last name, I cannot tell a lie, resides with her family in Tyler, Texas, which just happens to be where my mother and grandmother live and where I taught from 2007 to 2011. Tyler is a unique town, and you might visit it if you like roses. Come to think of it, Tyler is the only city I know of where you can still find the intersection of Confederate Avenue and Martin Luther King Jr. Boulevard. You can even take your picture beneath the street signs. Back to Trudy. She is an award-winning, record-setting track star. She is also black. In August, she will begin her sophomore year at Robert E. Lee High School, which will soon open its brand new $123 million, 400,000 square foot campus that replaces the retired facility of the same name. Last week, Trudy wrote the trustees of the Tyler Independent School District saying, I am one of your true African and first generation African American students at REL. I am from Ghana, Africa, where slavery first began. I came to America in 2014. I have stood in the dungeons of the slave castle and seen the three-foot urine and feces stains on the walls where my brothers and sisters were kept. I've seen the tiny hole at the top of the ceiling where they would throw food into the captured souls. 
I walked through the gate of no return where over 12 million of my brothers and sisters were kidnapped never to return back to their home. I have worked the very fields and fetched water for my family from the very places my people were kidnapped. I love and enjoy the sports I play at REL. I can't be playing sports, supporting, and going to a school that was named after a person who was against my people right here in the United States. He owned slaves and didn't believe people like me were 100% human, let alone could ever go to my very high school. I cannot bear and will no longer wear his name on my race jersey. I am currently the fastest girl on your varsity cross country team. I held that place my ninth grade year and plan to do so the same my 10th grade year. I don't see a future of remembering a person who did nothing for our country and who did not care for me or my people. He continues to bring our city down. As one of your black students, I'm respectfully asking you to take up the REL name change issue. Please vote to change the name, not to Tyler Lee, but after someone who we can all be proud of. Using the excuse that it would be too expensive is not okay. This town was built on the backs of my enslaved brothers and sisters. Do it in their memory and honor the future of their ancestors that are at REL. I hope you understand where I am coming from. Signed, Trudy Lamb. Trudy Lamb is a messenger of God being sent as a sheep into the midst of wolves. She is wise as a serpent and innocent as a dove. She's also fast, very, very very fast, so fast that the dust falls as if in slow motion from the heels of her running cleats. She is a prophet of God's justice and shalom, and she is a witness to the future that God will one day have. I wonder how, or even if, she will be welcomed by the trustees or the citizenry of Tyler. Will she be wanted? Will she be heard? Will the residents of Tyler and beyond listen to her story? Or will she be like Jesus was, dismissed, kicked out, and removed from the team? Will it be easier for Sodom and Gomorrah than for Tyler, Texas, when the day of judgment comes? It's easy to talk about Tyler, Texas, especially from 1,200 miles away in Northeast Ohio in a state that was never part of the Confederacy. But we should not kid ourselves. Jesus is sending sheep into the midst of wolves in Ohio, too. The Lorraine County Fair, our fair as of this moment, is still scheduled to take place in August. The Confederate flag will be sold there again as it has in years past. There are many people who are beginning to mobilize to address this symbol of hate that still has yet to be defeated. You may choose to join the growing throng of sheep who are being sent out to address the Lorraine County Fair Board. For some, this will be a step, a big step, toward advocacy and justice.
I wonder how or even if these sheep will be welcomed. Will they be wanted? Will they be heard? Will the residents of Lorain County, Ohio and beyond listen to their story? Or will they be like Jesus was dismissed, kicked out and told to leave? Will it be easier for Sodom and Gomorrah than for Lorain County, Ohio, when the day of judgment comes? Or maybe, just maybe, the wolves, including wolves in sheep's clothing, who think they do not have fangs or howl at the moon, and those wolves who have never in their life killed a sheep, they go to their cupboards in their kitchens. And they pull out a glass and press it against the lever on the refrigerator first for ice and then for water. The wolf takes off the sheepskin and says to the lamb, Here, drink. Take. This water is for you, a sign that you are welcome, wanted, and heard here. It's one step, a first step, and not the last step. But maybe, just maybe, it's a step toward the day foretold long ago by a prophet when the wolf will lie down with the lamb. Amen. Oh, uh -huh.
Jesus the Christ. You are welcome and wanted here. This is a table of acceptance for the whole wide world. It is for you. Will you have the courage to accept acceptance and come to this table and be fed by the body and blood of Jesus the Christ? The invitation is a standing one. Come, blood. You are welcome, wanted, and accepted here. Let us join our elder in prayer. Gracious God, we come to you grateful for your love and grace in our time of sadness, unrest, fear, and stress. Thank you for your son, Jesus Christ, whom you sent to lead on your children on the path of salvation, regardless of the shades of our skin, the loves of our hearts, and the errors of our way. Father, we come to this communion feast, remembering Christ's supreme sacrifice. Bless this meal, the bread his body, the cup his blood, to unite us in a new world family for eternal life and forgiveness of sin. God, as we go forward, send your Holy Spirit to help us as disciples, to go outside ourselves, to work diligently to repair the wrongs of our past. Speak up when we see injustice. Overcome prejudices and to love and serve one another to become beacons of hope for the communion good of, towards peace through the, from our doorsteps to the ends of the earth. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. On the night Jesus met with his disciples in an upper room, he first washed his hands, and then looking upon the table, he found gifts of grape and grain, and taking the bread, he blessed it and broke it, and he said, This is my body broken for you. Take, eat, all of you, and do this in remembrance of me. In the same way, after supper, he took the cup, and after giving thanks for it, he said, This is the cup of the new covenant poured out in my blood. Drink of it, all of you, and do this in remembrance of me. For as long as we eat this bread and drink this cup, we practice the courage to accept acceptance and that we are welcome and wanted at this table. Come, beloved. Everything is ready.
out by God's grand design. Will we welcome them? Will we want them? Will we be them? That is the charge, beloved, to be both the recipient and the one who is sent, to be gift and gifted. As our worship prepares to conclude, know that the opportunity to participate in the mission of God, it never, ever ends. So turn on the tap and prepare a cup of cold, refreshing water. Amen. Mm -hmm.